Uh, good afternoon. The uh, Judiciary and Public Safety Conference Committee will come to order. Today is May 3rd, 2023. And uh, thank you all for uh, your patience as uh, we have been working to assemble a conference committee uh, report here. Um, I will let you know that um, since we were last together yesterday, uh, besides long floor sessions for both uh, houses, um, the uh, leadership of the conference committee and, and uh, staff and uh, some other members have been uh, engaging in extended consultation and work to review uh, the, uh, the budget and uh, policy. Um, and we are uh, uh, beginning, we're asking questions, we're identifying where we need more information to help us reach some recommendations for the full conference committee. Um, and uh, so I'm pleased to report we are making good progress um, in this collaborative approach to uh, reaching conclusions on budget and policy. Uh, so what we will be, well, those are basically my uh, uh, introductory remarks. I want to invite either uh, my co-chairs here if you want to add anything to that before we move on. Okay. Um, so uh, our plan today uh, is to go through the side-by-sides, which just became available, uh, and uh, council will do that. And where we, uh, where the co-chairs have reached consensus on it, we're going to invite the conference committee to uh, discuss or for there to be a motion to adopt uh, basically same and similar provisions or provisions where uh, we've concluded there is no, uh, uh, there's agreement, uh, even if some provisions haven't formally come through the full process in either the House or the Senate. Uh, so uh, with that, um, uh, we will ask uh, Council uh, to go ahead and walk us through the side by side. Um, and uh, I should note for the record, we do have a quorum present. Mr. Chair and members, as, as noted, I'm going to walk through the side by side, but there should also be a table of same and similar provisions on one side, a document, um, same and similar provisions on one side, and a list of provisions where there is some difference between the two bodies. And together, this entire document, front and back, um, should encompass the, the pieces that are before, um, that are for consideration before the conference committee today. And those are the specific provisions I'll identify in the side by side. Um, and also, some of the provisions that make up the specific subject matter, let's say civil forfeiture updates, they're they're listed throughout the bill, so we may be moving language related to that multiple times as we walk through the side by side. Just wanted to note that for everyone. So beginning on page mm -hmm. R1, <coughs> house language, section one. This is up related to civil forfeitures. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Maybe I'll just keep it down here. Um, and this is identical language, correct, Ms. Primo? Yes, Mr. Chair. All right. Chair Becker Finn? Uh, yep, I would move uh, approval of the adoption of the House language just because they told us we had to pick one or the other and they're the same. So I picked House. <laughs> <laughs> so I would move adoption of the House language on that section. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the House language uh, relating to civil forfeiture um, beginning on page R1. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R2, section 1, R3, oh, on, on the Senate side. And R3, Senate language, section two. These are related to um, uh, marriage uh, name changes. <clears throat> Chair Becker Finn. Uh, I would move adoption of the Senate language uh, as laid out on these provisions on post dissolution name changes. <clears throat> Any 
And we'll note that the uh, Senate language contains some language that is not present in the House relating to uh, name change process for persons who are divorced in other states and some additional clarifying language. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any. Uh, all those in favor of uh, Chair Becker's motion to adopt the language relating to post-dissolution name change, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R4, Senate language, Section 2, and R5, Senate language, Section 3, relates to transit data, transit customer data. So, Ms. Primo, this is language that was contained in the Senate file, but not in the House file. Is that correct? Mr. Chair, yes. Oh, I see that. Chair Becker, Finn. Uh, I would move adoption of the Senate language. Uh, this, uh, we did hear this in the House, and it was included in a different omnibus bill, but uh, we'll move adoption of this language here in our conference committee. Chair Becker, Finn moves adoption of this language relating to transit customer data um, to be included in the conference committee report. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not hearing any. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, um, the next provisions relate to um, the retrieval of contents in, in, in a car that's in an impound lot. Um, R6, Senate language, section 1 and 2. R7, Senate language, section 3 and 4. R8, Senate language, section 5. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would a move adoption of the Senate language uh, on those outlined pages? Chair Moeller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And this language is a bill that passed as a standalone bill on the House floor. It was a bill I carried. Um, we were hoping to just move it in both bodies standalone, but not sure that's going to happen in the other body. Um, and it passed unanimously off the House floor. And we did hear it in Judiciary Committee, too. And the Senate has passed this language through the committee process. Um, and it's uh, part of an omnibus policy bill currently on the Senate floor. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of this language relating to impound lot retrieval of contents of towed vehicles. Any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, the next set of sections relate to changes um, made by the ban the box bill and, and various changes to the appointment process. Um, R8, section 1. R9, section 2. R10, section 3 and section 4. Yes. Okay. 
Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would uh, move adoption of the Senate language. Uh, this is another one of those things that was maybe moving in some other omnibus bills, but uh, we think it's important to get this done here. Um, we can find agreement and would move adoption of the Senate language. Any discussion from members of the conference committee? Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the language relating to ban the box. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The, amend the language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R11, House Language, Section 4. This is a House only provision related to um, the, the general similar provision on marriage related name changes for persons with felony convictions. <coughs> um, the House um, does not require the person to pay a filing fee if the name change is done within six months of their marriage. Um, keeping it consistent with um, current law. And so, Ms. Primo, when, under current law, when someone applies for a marriage, they, uh, they can make name changes, but it's a more cumbersome process for persons with, um, uh, with felonies. Is uh, that right? So they're being routed through a different process for changing the name that includes some other verification, but rather than paying the filing fees twice, just the one filing fee for the marriage license will cover and they can do the uh, name change process separately without a filing fee. Is that the plan? Um, generally, under car there's a, a larger bill that this language goes with and it's the same in both bodies. And so under current law, a person with a felony can change their name um, with, uh, through, the, through, through the marriage license process. And there's no fee required for that except to pay whatever the, license, the marriage license fee is. So the bill generally is changing that so that um, persons with felonies go through a separate name change process on, that is under current law specific to persons with felonies. And in doing so, that would require a fee, but the specific house language would not require that additional fee, thereby keeping it consistent with current practice. I, Got it. That, okay. Thank you. Chair Becker Finn. I uh, would move uh, adoption of the House language uh, on that provision. Is there any discussion relating to this motion? Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the House language relating to name changes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R11, Section 3, uh, Senate language, Section 3. And this is related to post dissolution name changes. The um, Senate um, authorizes the new name change process for persons who are divorced outside of Minnesota as well. <clears throat> and Ms. Primo, there's also language in the Senate bill that clarifies that this process does not apply to those with felony convictions, right? Mr. Chair, yes. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move adoption of the Senate language on this provision. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee on this motion? Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the Senate language relating to post dissolution name change. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R12, House language. Section 6, um, this clarifies that um, in certain actions brought by a military beneficiary, equitable relief is an additional thing that can be obtained in, in addition to recovery of actual damages. So Ms. Primo, current statute has an or, and this change replaces that with an and, so they're not exclusive forms of relief, is that right? Yes, Mr. Chair. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move adoption of the House language uh, related to this provision. Um, Mr. Chair. Ms. Primo. R12, Section Hold 1. On, we, don't go on yet. Oh, I'm sorry. We haven't voted on it yet. I'm sorry. Um, just just uh, clarifying, the uh, the Senate file um, has uh, passed out of committee and is on the Senate floor. 
the House brought this into the Conference Committee. Any questions or discussion from members of the committee? Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the House language relating to uh, military beneficiary civil remedies. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Now, Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, R12, Section 1. And our, this, so, um, Mr. Chair, just a point of clarification. There are several changes that relate to the real estate transactions bill, and it is sort of spread out throughout several um, pages. So I'm going to skip over just a few sections because those, those will be house provisions that we adopt. And then we'll come back to those pages. I think that might be simplest. Okay. So R12, Section 1, R15, Section 2, and these are all Senate language. R15, Section 3, R16, Section 5, R17, Section 6. R19, Section 4, Section 5, and Section 7. R20, Section 8. R22, Section 9. R23, <clears throat> Section 10 and 11. Oh, what? Sorry, I'm 17. Which, Two Section 9s here that you want to clarify? Or? R22. Oh, thank you. Going back to R22, apparently there are two Section 9s. Just to clarify, <laughs> That would be Section 9, Senate language that begins on line 42.12. And then moving on, R23, Section 10 and 11. R24, Section 12. And those are all the changes related to real estate transactions clarifying changes to chair becker finn uh would move adoption of the senate language on the sections outlined chair becker finn moves adoption of the senate language as described by council on real estate transactions um, and just to clarify the uh the only difference between the house and the senate is that in the process of engrossing the house language uh dropped a statutory reference so, uh, is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any. All in favor of Chair Becker Finn's motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion prevails and the language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, so now we're going to go back to R14, House language. This is one of the provisions related to updates um, re related to civil forfeitures. Um, I believe it deletes a obsolete um, provision that's no longer needed. Oh, Section 8, R14, Section 8. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move adoption of the House position on that language. <clears throat> Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the House language relating to uh, Section 504B.301. On page R14, is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, moving to R19, Section 6. This is a change to the Marketable Title Act. clarifying that state agencies and departments have um, a specific exemption from it for um, when they are in possession of real estate. <clears throat> R19, 
And members, this was included in the Senate. The House file was passed out of the House Judiciary Committee and, and we referred to their Transportation Committee. <coughs> Chair Becker Finn. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Would move adoption of the Senate language, another one of those provisions that maybe was going to be somewhere else, but we're going to get it done here. Is there any discussion from members of the Conference Committee? Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the Senate language uh, as uh, identified by counsel. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R25, section, uh, House Language, Section 23. This is, um, I think, the remaining provision related to civil forfeiture updates, or one of them. <clears throat> Chair Becker Finn. I uh, think you would move adoption of the House language. Chair Becker, Finn moves adoption of the House language as described by counsel relating to civil forfeiture. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R26, Section 5. Senate language. Um, this is another um, data classification related to transit customer data. Chair Becker Finn. I would move adoption of the Senate language. Chair Becker, Finn moves adoption of the uh, Senate language as described by counsel relating uh, to uh, this data, uh, transit data. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails and the language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, um Page R28, Section 5, and page R29, Section 6. These are the ban related to the ban. Oh, and R29, Section 7, the ban the box changes and related um, changes to the appointments process on the Senate side. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move uh, adoption of the Senate language uh, as previously discussed on Ban the Box. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the uh, Ban the Box language as described by counsel. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R30, House language. Section 25, these are two repealers. The first one relates to um, the, the bill on clarifying uh, real estate changes. And the second paragraph, paragraph B, relates to um, civil forfeiture process updates. Chair Becker Finn. I would move adoption of the House language as just described. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the language as described by counsel. Any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> the motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, we're going to move to page R39. Section 14 on House Language, Section 14. Um, these two provisions are virtually the same with a minor technical. Um, difference and this relates to prohibitions on employers from inquiring into um, the pay history of an applicant. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move adoption of the House language. Um, we had very similar language in both bills. Um, there's a little technical difference, but would move the House position on that. 
Chair Becker, Finn moves adoption of the House position on page R39, section 14, relating to pay history. Any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails, the language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, page R43. Um, house language, section 20, and this um, requires um, uh, the the use of closed caption television and services if they are if those are if closed ca if television services are provided to the public. <clears throat> Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move adoption of the House language. I know um, this was vetted in both bodies. There was a question about whether there would be a cost. There is none, um, and so we would move uh, adoption of the House language. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the House language relating to uh, disability discrimination and the closed caption services. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not seeing any, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails, the language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, on members, moving to page R47. Um, House language, section one, these are identical and um, it makes some changes um, related to um, the issuance of certain data practices opinions. I think it's an admin agency bill. Chair Becker Finn. I uh, would move adoption of the House language. Uh, this was an agency request. Chair Becker, Finn moves adoption of the House language as described by Council. Is there any discussion from members of the Conference Committee? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Page R48. Senate language. Section 1. These provisions are almost identical minus some very technical changes. <clears throat> Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move adoption of the Senate language uh, related to this provision. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the uh, Senate language as described by council. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion prevails, the language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, um, on R48, House language, section three. Um, however, this um, language needs an oral amendment on page 50. This section includes both changes related to the student uh, data privacy, directory data privacy, as well as um, data access for um, tribally enrolled or descendant students. And um, we are only, the motion would be to adopt just the, um, just the pieces related to student data privacy because education is ha has both um, in both bodies there are the provisions related to tribally enrolled students so um, I will make I will read out that amendment pay R50 house language line 44.7 after the semicolon insert or line 44.10 delete Se the semicolon or and insert a period, delete lines 44.11 to 44.13. Chair Becker Finn. 
Uh, so I would move adoption of the language with that oral amendment as just outlined by staff. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the language as described by council with the amendment as described by council. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair, R50 section four relates to the um, student directory data privacy as well. Um, house language. <clears throat> Chair Becker Finn. Would move adoption of the house language. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the house language as described by council. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. R51, section, House Language Section 5. Um, this um, relates its data um, on um, survey day premises location. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, it would move adoption of the house language. This is a chapter 13 uh, related to uh, survey day farms. Oh. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the uh, chapter 13 changes relating to survey day farms. Is there any discussion from members of the committee? Not seeing any, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion prevails. The language is adopted. Ms. Primo. Um, Mr. Chair, R53, Senate language section 4. Um, there was a difference here between how the House and Senate approached um, the um, authorization for persons to perform civil marriages. And, this, and the Senate position um, authorizes anyone who registers as a civil marriage officiant with, with the county. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move adoption of the Senate language uh, regarding persons authorized to perform civil marriages. Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the language as de the Senate position uh, as described by council. Is there any discussion from members of the conference committee? Not see, uh, Senator Pappas. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, this is a really interesting big jump. Um, I know a couple of years ago, uh, both Senator Limmer and I were interested in letting elected officials do it. I thought that would have been kind of cool, but I guess that looks a little too self-serving, so we better just let anybody <laughs> do it. <laughs> so I, I lean toward the House version. <laughs> <laughs> And yet, it's the Senate version being moved. That's, <laughs> that is correct. Is there uh, any discussion from members of the conference committee in addition to Senator Pappas's comments? <laughs> Anyone want to follow Senator Pappas on this one? Not seeing any more discussion. All those in favor of Chair Becker Finn's motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. <laughs> <laughs> No one's calling division, so we'll move on. Uh, the uh, motion prevails and the language is adopted. <laughs> Ms. Primo. Mr. Chair and members, I believe this is the last provision. Um, R53, House Language, Section 1. Um, this creates a um, sort of open discussion process for adverse health care incidents. <clears throat> And members, this provision was included in the House uh, bill brought into conference committee. It was passed by the uh, Senate Judiciary uh, Committee and I believe the Commerce Committee and it's on the Senate general orders at this time. Chair Becker Finn. Uh, would move adoption of the House language uh, on this. This is uh, referred to as the Candor uh, bill and would move adoption of the House language. 
And members, this uh, provides an alternative process for uh, resolving um, adverse health care incidents without having to go through the tort system. Is there any discussion from members of the committee? Chair Becker Finn moves adoption of the uh, House language as described by council. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion prevails. The language is adopted. Is that it, Ms. Primo? Mr. Chair, yes. So for today, uh, members, we have um, concluded our substantive work. Uh, we are on our way toward assembling a conference committee report. Uh, the uh, members of the conference committee uh, individually and um, the uh, leadership will continue to meet to go over uh, additional policy matters and um, see what our recommendations are um, and also to uh, continue our work on uh, finding agreement on the budget. All of, of course, will be presented publicly and, and there'll be an opportunity for the conference committee to discuss it. Um, and uh, we'll have opportunity for public input um, as well at the appropriate times. Um, Chair Becker, Finn, did you want to give us any uh, heads up what to expect for tomorrow when you have the gavel? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Latz. So uh, we will meet uh, tomorrow. We are going to take some uh, public testimony um, related to some of the provisions where um, the House and Senate are not yet aligned um, to hopefully uh, give us some clarity and also hear from the public on some of those provisions related to uh, the judicial branch requests and some of the differences there as well as a couple other areas. So that's, um, has it been posted? Okay, it's been posted, so um, out there for uh, the public to take a look to and look forward to getting more done tomorrow. What time was it? 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. All right, so 9 a.m. or the call of the chair. <laughs> it won't be earlier. <laughs> no earlier than 9 a.m. <laughs> Um, and we appreciate everyone's patience as uh, staff is working very hard to make sure we have all of our materials available and organized so that uh, not only the conference committee but the members of the public can take a look at things as we're going through our work. So thank you all for your work today and we are adjourned.